the launch of the new S1000R. I've been incredibly lucky to get invited to this. This is the UK launch with the big boys. We've got the Baron, Fast Bikes guys, Chris Newbegins from Practical Sports Bike, and me. So uh, this is going to be really, really interesting. We just had the press briefing, talking all about this bike, all the specs. 165 horsepower, 114 newton meters. Exactly the same as the old engine, more or less. No shift cam. What they've con concentrated on is weight loss. So, without further ado, Chopsy, roll the intro. We are at Cadwell Park, as some of you eagle-eyed may have spotted. So we've got a road ride this morning, about, uh, they say about 40 miles on the road. Rain is forecast about two o'clock, and this evening they've hired Cadwell Park, and there's an open pit lane at Cadwell Park. So, but the rain is meant to come in. I've just checked the forecast, there's even hail meant to be coming in around that time as well. So, uh, that's nice. So the old bike, I've said in the past, you know, it's, it's almost too good. It was a little bit dull because it was so good, did everything so well, and it was just a little bit clinical. You know, compared to the V4s and the V-twin nakeds, it's just a little bit too clinical. So what they've concentrated on this year, because this is obviously the new double R, basically the new double R frame, the new double R swinging arm, which is a much lighter bike. So there's a big weight saving on this. All the models are under 200 kilos, fully fueled, full tank of fuel. Yeah, it's got a bit of go to it. It feels agile. I say this is only the sport version, so this doesn't have any of the fancy wheels. This has just got normal cast wheels. And it feels agile. It does feel agile. I think much more agile than the, the old model. The old model felt a little bit heavy. I think the old model was about 100, 210 kilos. So this is, they say on average, depending what pack you have and whatever, it's around about 14 kilos, 14 kilos lighter than the old version. So that is a considerable weight saving. And even without the M wheels, it feels nice and flickable. Quick shifter and blipper. It's just beautiful, really smooth. It's nice. I can tell straight away, been on it five minutes, I can tell it's a big improvement over the old bike. It's much more engaging. I've got it in dynamic mode, which is all the suspension stiffened up. What BMW have said is, you know, the range on the new suspension is much greater than the old setup. So from comfort to sporty, there's a bigger range of, of, uh, of travel, if you like. And you can really feel that it feels very sporty in that sport mode so you can tell there's you know there's a bit of weight over the front wheel because that's the thing with a lot of naked if you sat too upright it unloads the front wheel a little bit and you don't get much feedback from the front end because i'm forward i'm cantered forward on this i can feel what the front end's doing i can actually feel that even though the suspension is electronic and it's obviously variable i can still also feel what the tarmac's doing as well. I can feel the texture of the tarmac, so that's great. Sometimes with electronic suspension, you lose that. Bottom end. Ooh. They've changed the gearing over the double R. They've actually made it taller geared in fourth, fifth and sixth. That is to make it nicer on the motorway. First, second, first, second and third is exactly the same. No change to the double R. Which, when I heard that at the presentation, I thought, well, I would have preferred, actually, for them to gear it down a little bit. So I make it a little bit more lively at the bottom. Because the thing this bike is missing, it doesn't have the shift cam that the double R's got. So this motor is more or less the same motor which is in the XR, because that is also without the uh, shift cam. 
<laughs> Give Chris a beat. Another reason they have lowered the gearing in the upper last three gears is to reduce the buzz. The buzz from the engine when you're at motorway speeds. I can tell it's still a little bit buzzy. It's a little bit buzzy at the bar ends. Even at 4,000 revs, 62 miles an hour, it's a little bit buzzy. Is it intrusively buzzy? I don't think so. This is one of the downsides with straight four engines. They, you know, they could be a little bit buzzy in the handlebars. Leading the ride, we have Steve Plater of uh, Isle of Man TT fame and uh, BSB, of course. Retired now, but leading our ride. I can tell it is a big step up over the old bike in terms of performance. It may be the same power, the same torque as the old bike, but you know, they've obviously retuned it as well. This is the new engine, it's not the same engine. Even though it makes the same power figures, it is not the same engine. This is the same engine that's in the double R, the 200 horsepower double R, but just detuned slightly. What they've done, they've tuned it for more mid-range and bottom end. We asked the question though, why doesn't this bike have the shift cam in it? Why isn't this bike 200 horsepower? This was raised at the briefing this morning. I've got away here now, everyone passes. And uh, you know, the answer was, because for a road bike, it doesn't need it. And what they actually did, they brought up a comparison that BMW had done, comparing this to the Street Fighter, you know, not, not to 200 km tests. And I think it was not to 100, this was faster than the Street Fighter. The Street Fighter was one mile an hour faster at 200 km's. It's still blooming fast and real world practical on the road. You don't need that extra power. <laughs> there goes Chris. Actually, the tank is a lovely shape just to grip my knees around because it's obviously, you know, it's the double R tank again. It's a lovely shape to grip your knees around, but it doesn't feel overly wide actually for us. You know, for an inline four, it feels surprisingly thin between your legs. You know, even, even to look down at it, do it doesn't seem overly, you know, overly fat. Let's get in the power, second gear. It feels very well balanced, really well balanced. I'm surprised actually. It's better than I thought it was going to be. Cruise control of course. Set the cruise, 30 miles an hour. Relax. Yeah, creature comforts. That's what you want. The base bike is only 12,000 pounds which is, seems incredibly cheap, but then you get no cruise control, no heated grips, no quick shift and blipper. It's a bare bike, no electronic suspension. You've got to really spend 14,000. I mean, that, that, that base one is just really to say the bike starts at 12 grand. I don't think anyone's going to buy that one. This is the spec people are going to buy. 14,000 with the heated grips, the quick shifter, the cruise control, all those little extras you do, and the electronic suspension, of course. All those extras that make it a damn good road bike. There's a lot of room in the seat to move back and forward. Hang off of. Yeah. I like this. Pirelli Rosso Corsa 2s, which you've been warned haven't been fully bedded in right to the edges of the tyre. <laughs> so, nobody seems to care, though. <laughs> and if they had put the shift cam engine in it, it could of course make 200 horsepower and still had good mid-range. But they said that would have added weight, that would have added cost. So I guess if they'd have done that, it would have been almost the same price as the double R. So, you know, it would have been probably a thousand pound more expensive across all of the different models. For what, another 20 horsepower, 20, 30 horsepower? Do you need it on a road bike? Mm. Yeah. It's a difficult one, that, isn't it? Really, you don't, but 
it's always nice to have more power, isn't it? It's got a decent pickup. If you if you open it up around 3,000 revs, it starts to wake up about four four grand, and then really starts to go about six grand. You know, so you've not got that instant shove like you have, you know, on a V-twin or a V4. You don't. You don't have that. You know, look, it's you know four. It starts to go. Starts to go, and then it really goes at like six. It's fine. You know, you get used to that. You get used to it. But if you jump off the Super Duke, for example, you know, it's not got that just wall of torque that hits you straight away. That's the only downside with a straight four. But that aside, it is still pretty torquey. The racing boys are all out on the outside line. Jizz fest. Got a punctured rod. Oh shit, I have as well. No! It's always one, isn't there? Had to be me. So we've got a stone. Bastard. What I'd like to do is take his dad's a photo shoot and get it done on somebody else's bike. That way we're still turning. Do you want to wait here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, happy with that. Yeah, happy with that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, sounds good. I know, there's always one, isn't there? Had to be me. Saved your life there, mate. You did, mate. Yeah, well spotted there. Well spotted. Is it the, is it the oil cooler? Or no, it's a radiator. There's a big, around the top, there's a big thing in it. Oh, I'm now going on the back with Steve Plater on the XR to the photo shoot. Oh, Christ. I've been on the back in a few years. You got it? Are you there? Yep. Uh, right. Yeah. Happy. Yeah, I'm happy. No wheelies now. <laughs> you might want to up the preload a bit of electronic suspension. I don't like it. Well, I can give you the review as a pillion now, can't I? It's quite hard to get on the pack. Well, this is the XR, of course. So that doesn't really count, does it? But if this was an XR review, I can tell you it's quite a tall bike to get up on the back of. I don't like it, I don't like it. I don't make a very good brilliant. So if you're thinking of getting a new S1000R, make sure you get the optional radiator guards. I think it's 60 quid for the radiator and oil cooler guards. 60 quid! And it'll save yourself a ride on the back with Steve Plater. Well done mate. No, it's nice, nice and smooth, cheers. The rain is coming in, so I'm jumping on the M version. This is the M, this has got the forged wheels, M chain, um, Acropovic, N can. So let's have a go, see if you can notice the difference with the wheels. The lighter wheels make a difference on the road or not. Uh, let's do it, people. It's raining. Doesn't sound overly different, I don't think. A little bit louder. Yeah, when, it, when you get to high rev range, a little bit more there. But of course, even though it's the aftermarket of Kropovich, and the main benefits of it are, are weight loss, of course. It is lighter. Marginally, maybe marginally lighter on its feet, but you probably have to go to the, the carbon to really notice it. The carbon wheels. You know, it's not an outrageous motorcycle. There are more outrageous naked. You know, the uh, Tuono, the Super Duke. You know, they are more outrageous than this. Now, that straight four engine gives it a very, a very linear power curve until you hit sort of seven grand. It's very linear. You know, it's not got that thump, that smash of torque. You know, it's not fighting to lift the wheel you know, until the revs are higher. So it does make it all a little bit more, I say the word subdued, but a little bit more subdued than the likes of you know, having a V4 naked or a twin naked. But it does make it very smooth. It does make it very easy to ride as well, very manageable. So there are some benefits to that. And it is nimble enough. That weight, you can really tell it's a lot lighter than the old bike. You can tell all the ge geometry has changed and it's much more agile 
I found the, the old one a little bit stayed, you know, it felt a little bit sort of boring, but this is, this is much more exciting than the old bike. And the good thing about BMWs, of course, you've got a three-year warranty as standard. You've only got a two-year warranty with all of those other super naked manufacturers. This one, you've got your full three years and you've got that incredible BMW dealer network. That counts for a lot. This M version costs, I think it's 16.3. I think it's 16.3 for the M version with the forged wheels and extra, I think it's 1800 if you want to put the, the carbon wheels on instead of the forged. So fully kitted out with carbons, <laughs> it's, it's coming on to uh, 18 grand, I think, this bike. You know, for the, the base one is 12 grand, fully specced, it's blooming 18. Right, we are in dynamic, and the, and the fueling is lovely, even in town. You know, this is below 2,000 revs. This is where straight fours are great when you're really low down on the rev range. If you're on a twin, it, would be, it wouldn't be particularly comfortable to be down below 2,000 revs. Straight four is super smooth. And the fueling, even in dynamic, is lovely. Right, this must be lunch. It is lunchtime. Easy to find neutral. Bing. Time for some grub. Lunch eaten. Nice little bit of scampi. Onward. Findings from the road, the highlights, the agility of the bike is very good. The electronic suspension is also very good. You've also on the uh, on the R model, you've got the suspension button here, so you can just press that and go to road or dynamic suspension. You've also got a preload adjuster as well. So the road mode, it's definitely softens off. It doesn't soften off massively. You know, it's still a sporty ride, but it just takes a little bit of the harshness out of the ride. Just, a, just a, not a little bit. It takes 30% of the harshness out of the ride. I would say you can still feel it doesn't completely turn it into an armchair you know <laughs> you can still feel the texture of the road maybe not quite as much as you could before but if you're going over the bumps it just makes it a little bit more comfortable and then if we go back to dynamic in dynamic mode it will sort of monitor how you're riding that's the point of it so you know if you're just pooling along it should be a little bit softer you start throwing it about it will use the IMU data because this has now got an IMU for this year and it will uh, and see how you're using the throttle and it will adjust the suspension accordingly but in dynamic it's definitely set up for a more sporty ride going into dynamic pro enables those options you've turned on in the dynamic pro settings so from the dyna dynamic pro settings you can have you know how much wheelie control how much traction control throttle response, all of that sort of stuff. So that's on your presets, basically. You've got a button here if you just want to turn off your traction control. This one, that can turn the ABS off and the traction control off, so it's like quite a nice little shortcut. We'll just call that the wheelie button. The riding position, you are leant forward a little bit. You know, it's for a naked, it's an aggressive position. I think it's more aggressive than the old bike. It's more aggressive than the uh, Ducati Street Fighter. You're more upright on the Ducati Street Fighter. This is a more sport, I prefer this position personally, but you, you do have a little tiny bit of weight on your wrists. Not a lot, but a tiny little bit. The foot peg position is perfect. You know, I'd say it's the same as all the other super nakeds really. Similar position to the uh, Tuono, for example. You know, it's, it's a little, if you're in this position all day, you may find it a little bit on your knees, but it's not bad. The highlights for me is the agility, especially the M Sport model. You can feel it is a little bit more agile, but there's not a great deal in it. The Sport is very, very good. So if your budget only allows you to go for the Sport, I, I don't think you're missing out on a great deal, to be perfectly honest. Overall, I think they've done a cracking, cracking job, and it, it's exceeded my expectations. It's definitely more fun than last year's bike, without a question. It's definitely got more of a fun feel and a bit less clinical, a bit less clinical than last year's. Well, we've made it back to the circuit. 
dry, <laughs> but there's been a splash of rain actually at the circuit, so gonna go out, see what it's like, all signed on, bikes have got warmers on, ready to rock. We've got, they've hired the whole circuit for the whole evening, so it's open pit lane, in and out, much time as you want. Just gotta pray those clouds will behave themselves. Let's have a closer look at the bike. This is the, uh, the Sport in the Hockenheim, 300 uh, quid extra, I think, for that nice grey colour. This one has the stat, obviously the Sport comes with the standard wheels, none of that forged malarkey. But, good looking bike, I think you agree. The one thing to note, on the, unlike the previous version of the R, the back end on this is unique, it's not just the same back end as what is on the double R. It's got a dedicated back end with a nice little latch here for accessing under the seat. Now go mate. <laughs> Nice little latch accessing under the seat. Why well, you want to go under the seat is another matter, I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not going to fit your sandwiches in it, that's for sure. Steering down part lurking under the cow, and that's obviously the new front end. Cornering lights, adaptive on the sport version, not on the standard. You don't have the cornering lights on the standard one. Moving on to the M Sport, this one has the forge wheels. I don't think any of the bikes have got the carbon wheels, they've all got the standard or, or forged. Of course, comes with the Akropovich. Not over, just it's a weight reduction thing more than anything else. It's not much, it's not a great deal more noisy than the standard one. Uh, you should be able to run four off but, of each. As you can see. So, which leads that, mate? Same calipers as what's on the double R. Whole brake set up exactly the same as the double R. But, uh, yeah. Very nice indeed. What do you think then, Bruce? Are you pretty impressed with it? No, I really am. Yeah. I've had a uh, lot of fun on this bike today. I think it's a big step over the first gen, isn't it? It feels more fun, doesn't it? It's more of a fun bike. It, it, it's delivering in torque, it's delivering in tech. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's... it's not... you, write, you write in the magazine already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> delivering in ten torque, out of ten. delivering in tech. It, this is Fast Bikes 2021. It delivers. <laughs> Me and Chris might be sharing a bike. That's yeah, it. Are you? Well, maybe. There's a bike down because I broke one, didn't I? Well, a rock broke one, to be honest. Well, Chris broke it, actually, because I was following Chris. There was a stone off his bike that broke my bike. So, it's so bad, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, Sod's Law struck, and I have no footage from the track sessions at Cadwell. Suffice to say, the bike's fantastic on track. Very, very capable track machine. So if you want to do road riding and also track work on this, fear not. It is a beast on track. As always, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care and bye-bye. Chops out.